you know, the model that you're running is kind of like that classic internet marketing model, you know, that like kind of really got into fame in the years of like 2000, 2015. I think the thing that you can layer is more content, more brand, that's how you grow. You're in sales and what you need to layer it with is brand. Like, you know, so like I've watched so many people find the business model where they've got a price, they've got launches, they've got that whole model down, it's funnel, it's landing page optimization, it's CAC, it's LTV, it's all that shit. Uh-huh. It's amazing, it's fine, it's really good. It, you know, gets people to a certain level, but then they're in the sales business, not in the brand business. Welcome to Canned Heat, a podcast brought to you by Liger Partners. We are marketing and operations experts, bred for our skills and magic. And each You episode, enjoy saying that way. I do. Much. We are bred for our skills and magic. <laughs> That's the show. Liger's almost <laughs> is like only my favorite animal. Is it? Okay. Yeah, it okay. is. All right. Yeah, we're not unicorn marketers. So if you're no, looking for one marketer who does everything, we're ligers. So we bring all of our skills together and make sure A that joining you- of the world's two most powerful animals. Marketing and operations. Yes. Yeah. So every episode, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to pick a topic centered on marketing or operations. So today we're going to talk about a marketing tactic, which is thought leadership. Yes. So thought leadership, if if that seems like a really kind of highbrow word, which it is, yes, is kind of the concept of all these people that you see on Instagram or stages or other places who've made a name for themselves. Mm-hmm. And they've made a name for themselves in order to potentially sell you something. They're selling you something. They're, Ooh, this is going to be a heated debate. They're going to sell you a dream. They're going to sell you a product. They're going to sell you a snow cone. Dreams like, are for sale. Yeah. And so some examples of those might be really good thought leaders like Marcus Lemonis. <laughs> I like Marcus. I do. I do like one of these that we're going to talk about that you well, are I'm going to let you say. Okay. Who's the other? And we're probably going to hear some yelling in the back okay. from our trusted producer. Right. Who's the another one? I um I won't even say his name. That bad? Gary uh, V? Yeah. Wow. Wow. But the good news is okay. of all the so I don't agree with his ethos. Okay. Sort of at all. <laughs> so why? Uh, I just don't. I think it's too. Uh, it's meant to be inflammatory, and it's meant to be sort of. I mean, it's he's doing what he wants to do, right? Like, I mean, yeah. he's getting the attention. He's got way more money than I do, and way more, you know, outreach and whatever. But it's sort of the difference. Even like you've seen, you've seen thought leaders forever. Like it's just now something that's become a business thing. You know. Yeah. Because back in the day, you invested all of your energy and efforts and talents into the company. And so if you said, oh, I'm the CEO of IBM, somebody would be like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Now, we really want to know the, the person, like mm-hmm. who's the person behind the brand and oh, by the way, there's a company. And so this thought leadership thing has become like a music person used to be, or right? like a band or an individual. Yeah. And you had individuals that were, you know, a little crass, and that's what they played towards. Mm-hmm. And then you had people who were safer and were for different audiences, but they may t- talk about the same topic. I, w- I would tell you that you know, Marcus Lemonis, who I, personal hero, and Gary Vee talk about very similar things. Yes, yeah, they do. I truly feel like I can go into almost any business. Doesn't matter what it is and have at least a decent chance of fixing it. Because I use three simple principles. I focus on people, process, and product. Now, when I think about the process side of things, you know, that's about rearranging things and systematizing things and putting structure and process in place. That's kind of the easy one. Getting the product to be relevant and designed differently, it's challenging, but it's not terrible to overcome. The last one is usually the hardest. And the people side of things do a couple things for me. Number one, they tell me if I should even move forward. If I don't like the people, 
It doesn't matter how profitable the business is. It doesn't matter how great the product is. It doesn't matter how great the process is. If I don't like the people, I won't move forward. But if I like the people and I believe in what they believe, I sense their passion, their work ethic, their integrity, their character, I'll take a chance on anybody and anything. Very similar things, mm -hmm. just in a very different way. Correct. I think I've heard Marcus Lemonis cuss like twice. And Gary Vee cusses every two seconds. Because he like dropped a box on his foot, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, that, That's how Marcus cussed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like. Stubbed my toe and right. then I had to say a word. So you can say the word, but right? But Gary Vee's like, salt and pepper. <laughs> but don't you think, I mean, doesn't it, because then you got like, uh, who's the guy who does Kitchen Nightmares? Uh, you know what I'm talking about. The, Gordon? Uh, Gordon Ramsay. Ramsay. Hey, he's a thaw leader yeah. too. Yeah. And he cusses like that too. Doesn't it just like lose, doesn't it lose its power? So, yeah, I mean, I'm not much of a cusser personally. I'm the same, right? Like if I stub my toe hard enough, something's going to come out. Right. But I also can appreciate if used. Why do you curse so much? For a guy who doesn't need to. Because I only believe in authenticity. It's how I talk. Like when I think about do I care about my employees, it feels more like in my brain and my heart and my soul, do I give a fuck about my employees more than do I care about my employees. That's, how my, that's from my brain and heart to my mouth. I am willing to deal with the ramifications of me being my full self. Do you curse at home? A ton. In front of your kids? Yep. I'm just not devastated to go into my fourth grade like teacher and, and Mrs. Thompson's like, you have a real problem. I'm like, what's that, Mrs. Thompson? Your daughter curses. I just don't see that as a real problem. Me and Mrs. Thompson just don't see the world the same way. Again, I am the byproduct of Mrs. Thompson telling me my whole life that I would be a failure. Yeah. Mrs. Thompson thought that a D in science was going to be my downfall, just like she thinks saying fuck is her downfall. I don't agree. In the right way. So for example, I would tell you like when I listen to Gary Vee, no joke, I typically listen to him in the morning. I'm getting That's up. That's a great way to get yourself inspired. <laughs> but it is. I would know. be like, I would be, I would have a acidic stomach if that were the first, if but, I up in the morning and I'm like drinking my coffee and I've got, but, I mean, I know this works for you. Okay. But uh, well, cause he says things like, and he, I guess it's a good thing Gary's not listening to this. Maybe one day he will. Oh, I hope he, would, he does. Okay, That'd you be great. should yeah. Gary. Right. Because I am going to misquote him so bad on this, but it's like, He'll get on there and he's like, I'm going to bleep out his words. He's like, you've got one and I think it's like 400 billion chance of having a life or something like that. Like he, he You gets, were born as a human being. Yeah, you could have been a ladybug, right? Like he says that all the time. What I'm inspires like, you? I'm going to die one day. But it's true. You know how you get up? Like sometimes I get up in the morning. Yeah, but sometimes and, don't you just want to get up and have like a cup of coffee and be a nice person? Well... I feel like that that, <laughs> that that gets me there. Like I'm like in the morning well, with coffee and so, my makeup and I'm like, yes, Gary. <laughs> yes, Gary. So, but this but is I, also why it's so different. So like the, so, cause you know, in my research background, like this is why there are things like boot camp and CrossFit yeah. and Weight Watchers the, yeah. and LA Fitness. Cause they're, they're all exercise. Uh -huh. And one exercise, people are screaming at you and making you roll tires. Right, and right. the next one, they're like, oh, that, Muffin's going to be five points, right? Like, I mean, they're very different that's ways true. of approaching sort of the same goal. And Listen, that's what thought leadership is. The ones we're talking about, what? I was just thinking, like, what's so funny about that is I would die in the military. Yeah. Like, any time. I, 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 I actually had... don't think that's true. I think that you would probably do very, very well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe. I do, like. All the modern conveniences of 2019, though. Yeah, I think they make you well, give just a lot because of that up. No, they don't. No, it's just it's, they no. Because I do. I Sleep. went to military college. Yeah, no, it's just about whatever. Showers. So they still shower. Makeup. The, they still make up. Okay. So the the thing about it is with what's what we're talking about because we're talking about the individuals and I'm trying not to get tied up into that. The tactic of thought leadership, yeah. which is something that when we're working with B2B companies, the company leadership is often incredibly hesitant to take on. Yeah, that is true. 
I mean, we can't even get them to like share often like the content or social or whatever across their private channels. But I will tell you, if you are not willing to do that, you will never see the payback on your marketing. So to, to our point of, in this example, Marcus versus, if you will, Gary, as that CEO, that founder, you need to know who you are. And you have to be authentic to it. Yes. I don't don't doubt that Gary Vee is as, as uh, offensive as he really and is. He, right? And he said that. Like, he's like, I cuss because... His kids cussed. I was on the one the other day about yeah, how his kids cuss. I, I'll probably have a problem with that one. He was like... I have them, but I'll handle that. Well, I don't cuss, so there you go. Right. But yeah, his do. But he... He's unapologetic. Yeah, I, so, the, sure so that. the point that, the big point about thought leadership and something that I'm I'm not as good at because I, I sort of play middle, right? Yeah. Is you do marketing, you want a visceral response. Yeah. I mean, if it's not- Hot, either if you're it's, on or off. If it's lukewarm, yep. you're done. Yep. Like you might as well have just not done it. Yeah. Not spent the money, not tried. Like it's gotta be a visceral response. Yeah. And I'm always proud of companies we work with because we'll do a lot of B2B. And so B2B tends to want to be safe, right? Like they're going to use the boring words and the whatever. And we'll get with a company that's like really willing to, to do something interesting. And those are fun because we know that we can be successful with that. Somebody's right. going to pay attention. like. And so when you're thinking about the thought leadership piece, you have to do something that's like going to get a reaction, something that people are going to notice and pay attention to. And you have to know who you are. You have to be authentic to yourself. So like I can never be Gary Vee because I'm just not. Yeah. I'm more like a Marcus. Yes. You didn't say that like. With yes. The, she didn't say that like really agreed. Well, I yes, I wasn't a really well, agreed agreed. What's interesting though is I'm, I, <laughs> I couldn't be Gary Vee. Like I couldn't be Gary Vee. But he motivates you. Yeah, but so does Marcus. That might happen to other things in your life. <laughs> so does Marcus, though. I re I appreciate the way. You know what? I won't. I can't. I can never even watch a whole Gary Vee, like never, never. <laughs> you were excited about asking this question. I don't feel like I need to swear to make a point. Uh, I also don't agree that business credibility is lost when you curse. Business credibility is lost when you curse when the judge of your credibility is a D or F player and somebody that is making surface level decisions. As a matter of fact, I would argue that at times I use my cursing as a filter to filter out the people that are not capable of seeing the bigger picture versus being so blocked. Oh my God, I heard the word f I can't hear anything else. Everything else must be bad. There's no good advice. This is a bad person. That is ludicrous. Uh, it goes into the same context as the way you dress or a million other variables of ways people that will judge you. See, when you're great, you can dress in all red. <laughs> all red. Next to, I mean, you can, you can blend into phone boots. I mean, you, you, uh, you can dress how you want. You can talk how you want because at the end of the day, the way you deliver is, uh, is all that people really care about. And the way you make them feel. I'm not cursing to disrespect someone. And I have empathy and respect why a lot of people may not like me or consume me. There are plenty of people that don't watch this video because they saw a keynote where I cursed and they were offended and they are no longer in my set. Surely I would have a bigger audience if I didn't curse. That is absolutely true. And business respect, sure. I may lose out on a deal because they were offended, but in the net, 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 net score, I win so many more by being me and just being me. That's like so I funny. basically just slide by it. I'm like, ugh. That's so funny. And of course, you know, like the profit comes out and I'm the first guy watching it, yeah. right? You know, so it's, but it's okay, right? It's okay because the tactic itself just means that you need to know who your quote unquote yeah. tribe is. Like who's yeah. your audience? Who are That's you talking true. to? Who are you trying to motivate? And you have to stay true to that. And I will also say to add, and I believe both of our influencers of choice topic that we're discussing today do this. Even when you get someone that comes, for lack of a better term, against what you're saying. So maybe someone poo-poos what you're saying on social media or the right, stance right. that you take. And it's the same with B2C, right? Like if somebody says something about your product, maybe your product did break. Do not hide that comment. <laughs> you need to address it. Yeah. Get, even if it's please email us and let's take right, the, right, right. let's take it off the public facing comments and bring it into private message or email us or whatever. You need to respond. Well, things are going to happen. 
Like yeah. it's just the world is not perfect. Your products are not perfect. Your services are not. It's Happens. really about how you respond to mm-hmm. that and responding in a way that's authentic again to how your brand is yeah. established and what you do. You can't have a service-based brand and then ignore a service complaint. Mm-hmm. It yeah. just isn't the case. And and also, you know, one thing that both Marcus and does is they are educational in their content. They yeah. are educating you about something about you, your business, about who you are. They really aren't talking a lot about themselves. Right. Or something that they're trying to sell. They're not out there saying, look how great I am. Mm-hmm. Right. They're talking about they're, they're doing something that motivates, that helps them kind of like mm-hmm. move you along the path. So there's some great. Uh, learning that can come from those things. Yeah. And and again, B2B brand, you got to do it. Like if you own a company, oh yeah. You got to do it. And you should yeah. you honestly you should feel passionately enough about what you do. And if you don't, you probably you probably shouldn't be doing it. And you know, I'm not going to be wishy-washy about that. You shouldn't be doing it. If you don't feel passionate about yeah, it, if you true. can't get out there and talk to people about it, then you shouldn't be doing it. Right. It's not why? But, yeah, I you mean, spend all your time in life doing that kind of stuff, right? And then not willing to wanting to share the knowledge or stand on the stage, and it's not self promoting. Everybody thinks it's self promoting. It's a necessary tool in the toolbox nowadays. Yeah, well, that's where if we go back to if you make it about your follower yeah, or your yeah, customer, then yeah. it's not self serving, right? right? Like um, Gary and and Marcus both, they're so positive about what they talk about that I would trust either one of them right to run whatever it was that yeah, I, at the core their message is the same yes it's yeah your, your yeah. life you can do whatever you want to with it you you're completely empowered yeah. you know da, 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 and you got to get all your crap out of the way right and one's going to say beep and the other's going to say crap right yeah. but they have their 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 avenues by which they uh, and it's so well, funny because I'm sure there are people listening to this they're like who's Marcus Lamonas since the competition and being able to kind of be in the trenches with Marcus I think our relationship continues to grow you know the trust continues to build and I think that it's been wonderful to be able to talk through things with him what's wrong Julie too tough no and give my opinion and hear his responses and learn from the things that that he's saying while also bringing a different perspective to the table one thing I've learned about Marcus since becoming a partner is the man works all the time you know I think that you assume that when you see it but he really does but he loves it so I'll be texting with him at like 10 30 at night answering questions or you know getting an email from him of like things he's been thinking of since the last time we spoke or adding things onto the docket. He loves what he does. Like this is what he's chosen to do and he puts his whole heart into it. And while, you know, you see little tidbits of that, to see it every day in real life is really remarkable. Nobody said decisively, I think it's a terrible concept because we should not be investing our money into things that promote bullying. I. I feel like I did mention right away with overrated. Did anybody else hear it? I did in a way. I said. In a way it doesn't work for me. Okay. I would like it to be more clear in the future. Sure. I think since becoming the partner, I can't speak specifically for Marcus, but I think that he's learning and I'm showing him that he made the right choice. And Gary Vee. Gary Vee, yeah. I've asked people before, yeah. And they, and they don't know who it is. is. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. So that's our canned heat today. We're talking about thought leadership. We got. I was going to say something about, else about Gary Vee, but I think that's my shutdown. I'm just... Are you can say <laughs> some- No, I'm just saying. No, I was just going to... In truth, I was just going to add that both of them have also said, I don't have to sell you anything. I don't need to sell you anything, yeah. right? Like, they're not... Well, I mean, and that's the biggest position of power ever. If you can tell somebody... Yeah. I don't really need your business. I, I just want to share my knowledge right. with you. And then they're like, oh, can I buy something from you? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm done. I'm done. That's all I had to say. Now you know what Whitney's doing at 6.30 in the morning. She's, I do. No uh, joke. 5.30. Okay. Wow. 4.40. Didn't my alarm say 4.40? Yeah. That's Thank you. evil. Release the beast. Right there in true <laughs> form. So if you're ready to release, release the beast. I think it's unleash. Release, unleash. <laughs> release, unleash. Unleash the beast. I don't think it's release the beast. <laughs> Where's the beast been trapped? 
back here. You're holding it in. <laughs> okay. Release. All right. All right okay. Yeah. If you need help with it's, becoming yeah. a thought leader, I mean, that's something that we do a lot. Yeah. Like, it, yeah. It, maybe you are a founder or CEO, right? And you're like, I don't know. Maybe you do need to unleash release. There is a path. Connect with us. Ligerpartners.com. And also, please subscribe, rate, all that good stuff to our podcast. Follow us on social so you get notifications every time we release a new episode. And we will see you next time.